and welcome everyone. Another Wednesday evening Bible study. I am so thrilled that you have decided to join us online to watch and to learn and to grow. Um, together we will go into the Word of the Lord and we're going to try to get some greater understanding about His purpose and His will for us in our lives. Uh, over the next several weeks, we'll be talking about probably one of the most important things that as a Christian that we can uh, apply to ourselves and that is the power, the purpose, and the principles of the Word of God. How to study scriptures, how to look at topics and things. We're going to talk about that. Uh, let's begin as we always do though with prayer. Ask for God's blessing and mercy on us tonight as we go to His Word. Lord, we love you and we thank you for another opportunity to study your word, to go to the power, God, that you give us, and that is through the word. It is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. Pray, God, that your will will be accomplished in us as we understand more about you. Give us the guidance and the direction that we need, Jesus, to understand you. Love you, Lord, and I plead your blood over our time together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, it's always a joy to discuss the Word of God. It's uh, the Bible that you hold in your hand every day or that you have on your phone or your iPad or computer, whatever. Uh, that is the guidance and direction that we need as individuals to live our daily lives. Uh, it would be foolish for us to think as humans that we could just kind of live our lives and maintain our sanity and our uh, right state of mind without some kind of help and encouragement and guidance from the God who created us. Um, we're going to, over the next few weeks, look at um, the power that's in the Word of God, the ability that the Word of God has to change us, to answer questions about our life's situations. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to also look at some specific books in the Bible so that we might could gain maybe a better understanding of why those particular books were put in the 66 books that we call our Bible. Uh, there is a purpose for the Word of God for each one of us. There's a purpose that God has in giving us His written Word. First of all, number one, is uh, the purpose in the Word of God is to show us the way of life. This is revealed in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Verse 15. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Speaking, of course, of Jesus, that knowing him, knowing his, uh, his purpose for us, that gets, shows us the way of life. If Jesus is in our lives every day, if we're spending time with him, we, we spend time in fellowship with him and fellowship with other people, believers, other Christians, then the Word of God is what leads us and shows us. Because we are in Him complete, the Word is guiding us daily. Another thing that uh, the Word of God, the purpose in the Word of God is to demonstrate the divinity of Jesus Christ. John chapter 20, verse number 30 says this, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of His disciples, which are not written in this book. But the verse 31 says this, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Knowing that God, Jesus, all of those come together in Jesus Christ. Understanding that his purpose here is to understand that he was flesh, but he was God. And he came here to give us guidance and direction uh, by demonstrating his life to us in this generation. The third thing that is important to understand about the purpose of the Word of God is it gives us an example to follow. 
Uh, this is talked about in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Now, uh, in, in following <clears throat> his steps, that gives us understanding that his life had purpose. He didn't simply come to earth to walk around and, and look at people, spend time with people, interact with people, and then leave earth and not leave a legacy and a purpose and a, and a principle for humanity. But he came because it's an example for us on how we should live our lives. If there's ever a question on, on how you should operate or how you should interact with people, look at how Jesus interacted. If, if, it's, if there's ever a wonder, I wonder how I, should, how, how I should act in this situation in my life, go to the Word. Find out how Jesus acted and then apply that to your own personal life. The fourth thing, and I think it's very important, is because the Word of God, the purpose in the Word of God, it is daily food for the soul of mankind. Isaiah, the Old Testament prophet, he wrote it this way in Isaiah 55 and 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11 says this, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The Word of God will bring forth fruit. The Word of God will accomplish its purpose. So we recognize and we understand that uh, when you use the Word of God, when you apply the principles and the, the characteristics and the teaching of the written Word of God into your life, it makes all the difference. Knowing that your situation could be very grave, Knowing there's a family problem, a financial need, a physical need, a mental, emotional, it doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes as humans, we literally reach the end of our rope. But with the Word of God, we gain strength. We get guidance. We get direction. The Word comes to us. It doesn't then just die and, and lay there, but it actually plants itself, dies, if you will, as a seed does. But then it begins to spring forth because the Word of God is alive. It's active in our lives. Uh, we know according to John chapter 1 that the Word was made flesh and dwelt, lived among us. We understand that God's Word became all that we would ever need. His Word became life to us. His Word became sustenance for our lives every single day. I believe that when you go into the Word of the Lord, it doesn't matter New Testament, Old Testament, the prophets, the poets, if you will, the new letters that were written to the churches uh, that we have in the New Testament, whatever portion of Scripture that you go into, it is representation of God. Therefore, it's life, it's love, it's capacity to change and to heal and to do its work, active work, in our lives. Now, when we talk about the Word of God, it's 66 books. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of verbiage, a lot of sentences, a lot of paragraphs, a lot of chapters and books that are, that are compiled together in this word. There's a couple of things that I want to mention about how you can study and apply the principles and the ways of God as you study the scriptures. Number one, study the word and use it in your time of worship. Prayers and praise mixed with the word of God can make an incredible time spent with him. Let the Word become part of your prayer time. Number two, study the lives and the stories of the people that were written about in the Bible. Because their lives, their situations, how they dealt with things could apply directly to your life today. Even in 2019, you can gain uh, direction and guidance from how someone else interacted with the situation that they were in. Thirdly, study the Word of God systematically. There's a layout in the chapters and the verses and the books, the scriptures, the authors, the conditions in which they wrote what they wrote, where they were living, how they were living, when they penned the words that they wrote. 
that there's chief characters and and lives that are represented in those stories that you can apply to your life. You can apply to where you are personally. It, although it was written maybe 500, 1,000, 2,000 years ago that, that, or longer that you look at the stories, they can still apply because people are still people. And fourthly, uh, another way to study the Bible is to take a specific topic, a specific subject, and then follow the principal processes that are in that subject. Pick one. Something that's, that God has laid on your heart or your mind. I wonder why praise is so important. Go into the Word and find the word praise. Read the studies about it. Why, why is family so difficult and challenging sometimes? Go into the word family that's written in the Bible. Find out stories that were mentioned or written about and how that they lived out their lives. Take topics, if you will, and subjects and go through the steps on why they are there. You're going to find that there's an incredible uh, power that happens in the Word of God as it's applied to your life. Thus brings me to another point. Memorize Scripture. Put, put verses in your mind. Establish them within yourself. The psalmist wrote this in 119 and 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. If you're putting the word of God in your life, it works. Memorize that. Put the word there. Uh, uh, apply the, the word to memory, the dates and the time frames. Look, consider why did the psalmist write that? In, in what situation was he in? Why did, did the prophet put the words down like that? Where, where was he living at that point? I want, to, I want to know the stories and how they connect and how they interconnect. Also, um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Verse 21 says this, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Always remember that the Word of God, the Bible that we hold, if you will, in our hands, although it's come through translations, it's come through the original Hebrew and Greek or Aramaic, and then it was put down in, in certain time and essence and how it was connected. And then men would, would, by the Spirit of God, would put the words down on parchment or on animal skins or on, on whatever kind of material that was accessible to them. And then we, we go through that and we discover that in 2019, of course, we have our Bible on our phones, we have our Bible on our iPads, on computers, on watches. Uh, we have access to the Word of God in so many other, other avenues that when we understand it, that there was a purpose for the written Word of God. There was a time frame in which it was penned. God anointed men, moved upon them to put words down. When we, when we look into the, to the, the beginning of the scriptures in Genesis, uh, they didn't have a computer perhaps then, but they had an anointing that God penned, even though it was years later that Moses went back for an example and he, God brought it to him, how to put the words down in the beginning God. And understanding how that all connected, you'll find that there is a power in the written word of God. It can, it can surpass jail cells, it could pass uh, kingdoms, it can surpass the, the palaces of kings and, and rulers, it can go into the gutter, into the poorest of neighborhoods, into the heart of a person, and the Word of God can become active in them. If we invest the time and the treasure of the Word and we allow it to apply itself in our life, then we will develop a love for the Word of God and for the things of God. If you love the Word of God, then God will shine in you. If you love the Word of God and you develop a passion and, a, and, a, and an understanding that you want to know what the Bible says, you want to wrap your arms around it, your mind around it, and grip it. Let, let, me, let me give you a closing word here in this lesson tonight. As you read the Bible, as you hold it in your hands, whether it's in pages of thin paper or it's on the computer, I admonish you, handle it with care. 
don't, don't just hurry past the, the meaning of the letters and the words and the scriptures. Don't do that. Allow them to become lit with the fire of the Spirit of God and then let that fire illuminate the path that the Word is leading you down. Uh, the represent representation of the Word of God, what it presents to us is that God has a plan for humanity and regardless of, of where you are, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of language or barriers, the Word of God is forever established. His love and his desires for humanity are pinned in his word. I, I hope that over the next few weeks that we can join together and perhaps accept the challenge of loving the word of God, understanding the scriptures and why they are there. Some of the stories that are put there, they have such a dramatic effect on us even in 2019. I pray that you will, in your personal time with God, that you will pray, God, let me love your word. Let me hide it in my heart. Let me understand why it's there, what it means. Don't let me just hear a rumor of what somebody thinks. Don't let me just read a, a concordance of what maybe someone's idea is. I'll have to go to those, but God, I want to know you for your word. Pray with me. Lord, today we thank you again for the written word, for the published word, for the the concepts, the precepts that are there, the understanding you give us as, as your creation, Lord, to know that the Bible is the roadmap that you've given us. It is your story about us, and we can learn and grow and develop in you. I pray, Lord, for each one today, God, as they go to your word daily in their prayer time and in their devotion, that you would strengthen and help them, Lord, to develop a passion for the, for the things of God and the principles of the word of God. We'll love you forever and we'll thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.